Welcome back, everybody, to a potentially noise-filled episode of another Sunday Six Gate. Only this time around, uh, we're going to have to do things a little differently. So for this installment, we're going to cross out the gate there, and we're going to replace that with line. Because what's going on here in the background is what I usually do, where I go out and I set up markers in what I think will be something that is difficult, but ultimately possible. And uh, after several minutes of flailing at this, it turned out that I'm pretty sure it wasn't. So this will be a six line, which is not unlike a six gate. It's kind of the same, but it's different. In which, in this semi-untested format, all three rigs will run all six lines, much like a usual six gate. But instead of zero points per gate, and we're charging for rollovers and reverses and all of that usual stuff, this is just going to be more of a straight points-based deal. The best run, the one who does it with the least problems, does it the most smoothly. We're, we're throwing some feel. We're going a little bit ice skating, a little figure skating on this. There, there is some, there's some room for interpretation. So under that, the best run, air quotes around that, the best run will receive three points. The second best attempt will receive two points. And what would be, again in quotes, the worst run will receive one point. And that's, that's pretty much it. It's, it's that simple. It's a test. You're here to witness the test. And uh, we are going to see, uh, once this little episode of Futility plays out in the background, we're going to see how it works. So that nonsense out of the way, we can get on to what we're supposed to be on to, which is what time is it? It's line time, because lines is just like six gate, only we we record one line at a time. It's just it's just me being lazy on a very hot morning. Uh, Jake, first up here lining up to the notch. This is the official notch. I will try to squeeze in some ranting about the debacle of filming that this particular morning uh, turned out to be. Batteries went dead, cameras overheated, uh, cameras got too hot and stopped recording in the midst of it. And yes, it's early October and the air temperature wasn't too, wasn't too bad. But uh, the rigs were tired, and I was drenched in sweat. And you might be asking, where's the spinner? How is Jake just left out here to flail at the notch? Uh, a virtually untested line. Uh, and the answer to that is because it was decided between the three participants in this particular a six gate trio is what we were calling it uh, is what we came out to film but it turned out to be the six line trio uh, composed of Jake the Snake Misdirection and the Tranquish and uh, they said uh, what was it youth youth before beauty so they are running in reverse order newest to oldest Jake is the most recently built, followed by Misdirection, and Tranquish was the one built the furthest off in the distant past. So Jake is the one that gets to find out how to run these lines. It is, uh, I do not think it is an enviable position, but I think he does a pretty good job of it. He's still outfitted pretty well. He has no changes made to him whatsoever since his last appearance. And despite a little bit of... A little bit of problems there. There he is coming up through, ending the first line. Uh, and here, here's uh, Ms. Direction. Look at that nice little glamour shot. Uh, there are no real penalties 
for reversing, uh, rolling over, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's just this is almost like gentleman's rules, effectively, because if you roll over and the other two competitors don't, you're most likely going to score lower than they will. And we're only talking about 3-2-1, keeping the scoring as simple as possible. Misdirection got up, got out of the, the main hole pretty easily there. She's pretty good at that. But she just has to use a combination of little tiny bumps to get up out of here as she's the only rig of the three without dig. She is fitted with her, her tusks, so she has her official wheel tire combo. Got a little light in the nose there. Finally employs a tiny little bit of reverse, but she's really hung up. There's, there's a lot of spots here to get really hung up, and when you fall in, you you really fall in. So, that, much like that. Let's see if she can eject herself out of there. Yes, but uh, an unfortunate backslide there. And early on, we were just taking it as a, as a run because this was considered, when we were laying it out, this was considered one of the easier lines. So like I say, working through a format, and we're so used to six gates where there's point penalties and gate maxes, whereas this is just, there's a start marker and a finish marker. Get from the one marker to the other using whatever means you have at your disposal. You can see a much lower gearing here. This is also the first proper test of the Tranquish's new wheel tire setup. This is the SSD clones with Amazon hair buns and Ms. Direction's former tire set J Concepts Scorpios. Uh, I tested the, the Scorpios on both the conventional mediums as well as the hair buns and there was just a little there was, there was something more to the hair buns that is a sticky stick to have right there he's really admiring up here uh 4s he was one of the 4s crew so he's got a, a lot of sauce to throw around has a bit of a tough time here every honestly as you can see from Jake in the first run and the amount of time he took to finally clear this this particular line, uh, this is a this is a difficult hole to get out of because there's no real way to line yourself up where you want to be facing to clear the gate on the top. And we've got another perfect mire. So this early on, we just called it. That was it for the notch. Three points to Jake. Two points to the Tranquish, one point to Ms. Direction there in third. And we were like, let's wrap it up. It's hot. Everything's overheating. Let's move on to the second one. Jake is still running first. Jake runs first all day. This is Youth Before Beauty. This is called the Intersect. We don't know if that name will stay. But as you can see, to the right, we've got concrete slab. And to the left, we've got nice, smooth river rocks. So it's kind of an intersection of the two styles. It is fairly chopped up. Some of these guys will make it look easier than others. And honestly, this, this was kind of a scoring by feel. So if they made it look or feel particularly easy, they were going to score better. But, but that, that was effectively it. If two rigs ran it and it appeared to be about the same degree of difficulty, but one did it quicker... They got an additional point. We're, tr we're trying to keep it simple here, and there's there's nothing saying that in the future, and there, there, there goes Jake, misdirection up second. There's nothing saying that in the future we won't tweak this. I mean, the six gate has been tweaked quite a lot, and this is kind of an offshoot of the six gate. There's no saying, uh, I, I think I like the, uh, honestly, I just like the ring of three line better. So on days when we're not filming a six gate, a three line might not be a bad thing. So misdirection coming up here. The Tusks, just such a good tire. I mean, she was through there in 
15 seconds, maybe. We'll see how the Tranquish does. Bit of extra weight on him. Uh, sometimes you'll see starting and finishing camera angles will look a little different. Intermediate camera angles will look a little different. This is because unbeknownst to me, I would be filming basically set up multiple cameras, start them all, do all three runs, and then cut the edits. Only to find out that at some point, like camera two switched off. So we don't have that footage at all. And this, this one was a nightmare to piece together. And this was an effort to try to save some time and get out of the sun. So through the intersect, the quickest up, misdirection, next best, the Tranquish. Jake took the longest. They all cleared it, but he took the longest. So that's a complete flip. So we are all square after two lines, four points all. So that's a good start. I mean, that's a nice, it's a nice even start here. Jake moving on to line three. This is Stonefall. I wanted to say Rockfall, but for some reason I went with Stonefall. I tried to think up some sort of a, a wittier name for this, but it honestly does just look like a bunch of rocks fell into place, which is kind of what it is. And the size of them, I mean, you can see the relative scale there to Jake as he makes his ascent. Uh, there's some big rocks here, and some of them are easier to pull over than others. And because of the nature of the rocks, how they're all big and smooth, and also would love to point out, you'll see this is like perfect course conditions out here. Uh, everything was blown off with the blower, and then everything was watered down, and I mean thoroughly. Uh, this is why you can see a little bit of dark patches here and there, another rollover by Jake. But the, the sun was just beating down so hard that like look look at the ground below the hexes it's it's just dry and the hose was still live at this point so it dried out so fast it definitely wasn't like attempting a comp series in october it did, did not feel much like october so jake getting a little bit better of a line jake is pretty good in not making the same mistake twice so cross he goes over to the other side. Uh, the neighbors are having a shed built, which is uh, if you hear uh, uh, the occasional popping and crackling. Ms. Direction lining up, we'll see how she does. So here, I think this is a superb trio to send out in this particular sort of format. Um, because we're talking, they've all got different gearboxes They've all got different axles. One are on SSD Pros, Misdirection are on Elements. Uh, the Tranquish are on TRX4 Portals. She made pretty short work of that, not being equipped with Portals. We'll see how the Tranquish does. The Tranquish has gone through a, a quite a lot of tuning as of recent after his somewhat lackluster performance in the Invitational. And also another reason that these three are great to see together is Ms. Direction deserves another shot because I do not think that her performance in the Invitational was at all indic indicative of her actual abilities. And the same goes for the Tranquish. The Tranquish had some bad breaks. Ms. Direction had arguably the worst break of anyone and the Tranquish has undergone a lot of changes. Ms. Direction, not as many. Some eagle-eyed might have spied that she's now running an XOR link riser in the back and uh, trying not to give away any spoilers, but when, as we get into a later line, uh, you will see a spot where that link riser and that alteration of her suspension geometry, boy howdy does it pay off. So, Tranquish, trying to dig around here and get it a little tighter, get in between the markers. He did not appear to have much trouble at all with that. Scored out a little bit easier from his direction. Tranquish in the middle. Jake coming in last. I think, I think if anything, this indicates where work need be done. So Jake is not upset at all. He takes it all in stride. As he lines up for line four, the left hook, this is much similar to the repeatable line that we do over in Drybone Valley, but this one turns to the left, and it is certainly, you'll see in this next angle, more chopped up. 
uh, you got to pull past that giant, what I think was the base for a, like a fence post. It, it's a, it's about a foot. And then you see you've got some like, some like dragon's teeth to try to get in between. This was, this was about the point as these were all filmed in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, line four was the point where stuff really started to go. I had a full overheat. This is actually the footage from camera two. Uh, camera one overheated like 31 seconds in, and it takes me about 30 seconds to get all the cameras turned on. So that's why this cuts off. Like you can see, Jake is about ready to drive out of frame. There was a, a split second of Gigi walking by in the background. The OG rock crawler is back there, just chilling out on some rocks. So Jake is figuring it out. This is this is the thing. Jake gets to feel it out. So another, see, further thoughts for uh, alteration of the format. I, I think from the guy that wears headphones in the voiceover booth, this guy right here, uh, I think if you run first, I think that there should be four runs. I think the guy should run first, then the other two run, and then the guy that ran first can opt to run again. I think that's, I think that's, that borders on fair. We will, we, you know, we will see. So now Ms. Direction is going to take her shot at it. And honestly, uh, so Jake on the holds versus Ms. Direction on rear tusks. Uh, they both have about the same amount of just a scant few minutes of wheel time on them. Uh, aside from a little bit of a wide turn there, I think her steering still needs a little bit of attention. She just rocketed straight up that, like like a full-on rock buggy. Like she had absolutely no problem there. So let's we'll see how Tranquish does. Tranquish has a, uh, a potential performance advantage in that he is portaled, so he's a little higher. Uh, he is the heaviest of the three by a wide margin. Jake and Ms. Direction come in around the same. I want to say they're right around five and a half pounds, maybe five pounds, six ounces. Uh, Tranquish is seven pounds plus because, I mean, he's got five servos in him. But you can see what the portal axles and that weight do. So long as he's not out punching gravity, he just sticks. So that win goes to the Tranquish. That's his first win, I do believe. Three points, two points. Once again, Jake, first up, having to struggle, takes home just one point. Jake will again lead us out onto line five. Line five is, of course, everyone's favorite, Bill Cipher, which would make more sense had camera three not uh, clicked off in this. The very tip the tippy top of this obstacle is almost a perfect triangle uh, where you see the two markers there. You see a line uh, heading off towards the left and a little line heading off towards the right, and they come into a perfect point at the top. And because of the way the markers are placed, you kind of have to fling yourself out into open space to complete this. So the guy that runs it for a seat, uh, there was another camera that shot that from like like imagine on here the camera would be at the maybe the five o'clock position and it was looking right across the top. It was like a perfect angle. And that was the camera that decided that it had had enough and it was going to sit this one out. So Jake got stuck and uh, has to rumble about. And obviously uh, there's going to be some degree of deduction for running over the 25% of the markers. So now Ms. Direction knows exactly what to do on Bill Cipher, which is try to get up on here without taking too big of a bump. There we are. Just gonna try to swing it around. She does have a tendency to lift tire a little. That was a very fortunate uh, back little front flip, back flip sequence there. Just gonna try it wide left, which is probably not a terrible idea. If the guy before you had some troubles, maybe don't follow the exact same line that he followed. They do drive a bit similarly. There's a there's a vast gulf in trigger feel between the two, as we're talking 
uh, ancient Mamba Max Pro versus a Hobby Wing 1080. Tranquish coming out on a copperhead and and a well, he's got a he's got another. So there's a 1900, yeah, 1900 KV slate in here, 2280 in Jake. So they're pretty close. Like there's a lot of similarities here. There's 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 similarities and differences. Well, I mean, if that's not a trite saying, I don't know what is. But uh, you can see a little bit of portal help there. And now we're going to take a little 4S launch. And uh, he, he, he would have landed perfectly in the notch, but he rolled over Misdirection's body. He took that very easily, narrowly beating because she did the little front flip, back flip sequence. So that's another first place finish. And that takes us into the last event. And there it is. It's it's tough, and the only objective is to start at the bottom and finish at the top because on the stutter step, uh, any mistake you might make uh, is going to... I haven't measured it accurately, but just based on eye line, I want to say the very top of the stutter step there is just over five feet, maybe five foot four. And as you can see, it's just it's just rocks all the way down. In this case, it is not turtles. It is rocks all the way down. Uh, Jake got too far off to the side, opted for a reset because, you know, he, as, as mentioned, he takes everything in stride. Every, every obstacle is a learning experience. And uh, many of these obstacles he has certainly never run before. I don't think he was betrayed much by any particular aspect of setup aside from perhaps I still have some questions about the front foams. You could see just for a moment there, the front tires really bag out. And I think if he had a little bit more support from the front tire, I think he would have kept it a little bit more in line. I think during the bumps here, during the hops, I think his bump ability score took a bit of a hit because his front end is too mushy. So he takes the quick way down. Ms. Direction is now going to test her skills on the stutter step line up here. Gonna go for, I think she's gonna opt for much, a very similar uh, approach. But if you'll watch, watch that rear, look at that. She was, she got blocks. She was, she was one of those 12 o'clock boys holding that nose end straight up. She's gonna try a little pullback and the tusks are gonna do what they do, and she's just gonna launch up. It was like she almost had, she almost had too much zoot there. Attempts and that that landing did not, that landing did not turn out well. So Tranquish, a little offline here. I think he'll straighten it up before his final approach here. We will see. Does that weight help or hinder here? Let's see, 4S. I think if he had started the burst a little earlier and let off that burst a little later, I think he could have cleared the whole middle of the stutter and just landed on the top, but it, that would really be lawn dart in it. So he, he nevertheless pulls it up onto the top and as he is heavier and lower, he can actually, uh, you could hear just a little driving out, but misdirection did indeed dominate that one three points two to the tranquish one to jake that is the completion of six lines we've got six lines in the books we move over jake he started strong and he ends with eight points which is good for third place and who's in second well the answer to that is nobody tranquish and misdirection both ended with 14 points each so, I mean, I think we all know what that means. We can't, we can't let this end in a tie. And by this, I mean this, this budding rivalry between dissimilar similarities. This video is going to end shortly in less than 30 seconds because, I mean, let's try to keep it realistic. But I can say with certainty that coming soon, the showdown, Ms. Direction versus the Tranquish. Six line, six gate, who knows? Something.
coming soon. Tune in. See you in the next one, everybody. Peace.